As our company has grown, both in terms of people and in terms of microservices, we've started to find it difficult to run our development environments on developer notebooks. We've developed an internal tool that manages our development environments on our Kubernetes clusters, and you can do the same. In this video, we'll talk a little bit about our tool, why we built it, how it works, and how one might go about building such a tool. Running the most basic subset of our production environment requires 23 microservices. Running this all locally would theoretically be possible, but would have to run something like Minikube on each developer's machine to simulate the Kubernetes environment. That's a lot of resources required on each developer's laptop and a lot of complexity that has to be managed in each deployment. For example, if you want SSL, each developer is going to need certificates in one way or another. A shared development or staging environment centralizes the management of the setup, but running a shared environment for 120 odd developers brings in new issues and difficulties in management. We chose to go a different route. We run a Kubernetes environment where each developer gets their own development environment all to themselves, thus allowing management and debugging in a more centralized fashion without developers stepping on each other's toes. We run a Kubernetes cluster specifically for our development environment. In this cluster, each developer gets their own environment that is not shared with any other developer. In our production environment, each application gets its own namespace. So this means we can't just have a single namespace per developer, not if we want the applications to talk to each other as they do in production. Each developer gets their own namespace per service. Developers can create objects in their own namespaces, but not in those of other developers. A developer can also allow another developer to access specific namespaces that belong to them, this allows developers to work on a feature together. We also use telepresence to allow local development while making services behave as though they were in the cluster. With telepresence, a developer can run a service locally and so avoid building and pushing a new Docker image for every change. The setup we've described needs quite a bit of configuration and management. So how do we do this? We store the configuration for each service inside the services repository in a directory surprisingly named Kubernetes. Each repository stores both its production and development configuration. Using templating, we can even share snippets of the config between production and development configurations. Each project fully encapsulates its own deployment information in crane templates and eJSON secrets. This means that every developer has all the information needed to deploy an instance of every application for themselves. It also means that each developer also has the same configuration when making a deployment. Our internal CLI tool, called DevBox, is used to deploy and manage these configurations from each developer's laptop, allowing developers to deploy, manage, and modify the development environment without having to be very familiar with the details of how Kubernetes works. DevBox wraps around Docker, kubectl, Shopify Crane, and Telepresence, among others. DevBox provides quite a bit of useful functionality for developers. For example, DevBox setup helps users authenticate to the infrastructure that will be used for the development environment. For example, the Kubernetes cluster and Docker registry. We've created commands within DevBox to pull and update all projects from Git. This helps developers to keep all of the microservices in their environment up to date and simplifies initial setup. Once the setup requirements are fulfilled with DevBox setup and DevBox pull, developers deploy their development environment to the cluster using DevBox deploy all. This automates running the crane and kubectl commands that render and deploy the manifests stored in each repo and will deploy the base subset of our services. An individual service can also be deployed or updated by running devbox deploy in that particular repo. Telepresence swaps are also managed by devbox using the devbox swap command. And speaking of telepresence, telepresence lets developers swap a local application, usually a Docker container, into the cluster as if it was running in the cluster. This means that in order to iterate over a change, developers can simply mount their code into their locally running application as opposed to rebuilding and pushing a Docker container. How this works for each individual repo can be configured in that repo's DevBox setup, and DevBox can manage the telepresence workflow. Before jumping in and building such a setup, it may be worthwhile to consider that there are several components in terms of cost, and they can all vary widely depending on how you go about setting this up. For example, the costs of running a Kubernetes cluster, the costs of maintaining scripts and manifests used to roll out the environment, costs of training developers to use and debug their development environment, and the costs of maintaining the Kubernetes cluster. 
So how about the results then? Well, the developers are happy. Before implementing this setup, it would not be realistically possible for a developer to keep all 23 of the services required for a basic environment up to date, run the services locally, and still have the time and resources to be an effective developer. Now, this is no longer an issue. If your development environment is growing to the point where it's becoming difficult to run or manage locally, then this might be a worthwhile approach to consider. If you decide to do something like this, we recommend building a tool or script to help manage the development environment. Manually running Crane or kubectl is not fun and is prone to error. Have a rigid system that applies across all repos. Piecemeal implementation repo by repo results in fragmentation that will be difficult to manage. Dive in and bite off more than you can chew. The only way to debug issues in a setup like this is through experimentation and usage. We also had a workshop the day we launched the new development environment in order to introduce it to our developers and have them set it up. This might be worth considering to get your team up to speed in a hurry. Thanks for watching. We cover many advanced technical topics in our engineering blog. You can find a link in the description below. If you'd like to see a blog post with more detail about this particular topic, let us know in the comments. Thank you.